Welcome to the Evergreen Thumb. I'm your host, Erin Landon, a Washington State University Extension Master Gardener since 2015 and a certified permaculture designer and modern homesteader. I'm here to share up-to-date research-based horticulture and environmental stewardship knowledge to help you grow and manage your garden and to share what the WSU Extension Master Gardener program is all about. WSU Extension Master Gardener volunteers are university-trained community educators who have been cultivating plants, people, and communities since 1973. Are you ready to grow? Let's dig into today's episode. Welcome to the Evergreen Thumb, episode 13. My guest today is Elaine Jamerson. She is here today to talk about xeriscaping. Uh, Elaine is a Kittitas County Master Gardener. She was born and raised in Sumner, Washington, and transplanted to Kittitas 23 years ago. She started her Master Gardener journey in 2018 and has been enjoying and learning ever since. She lives on a small farm where she grows as much of her own food as possible, and her passion is preserving the harvest and being able to share it with family and friends. Elaine, welcome to the show. Thank you. So to start off, um, how about tell us a little bit about yourself and um, your background as a Master Gardener? Okay, I was born and raised in Sumner, Washington, and transplanted to Kittitas County 23 years ago. I became a master gardener in uh, 2018 and have been loving it and learning since. All right, so today we're here to talk about Zero Escape Gardens. And so to start, I guess, start off, tell us what is Zero Escaping? Xeriscaping, uh, the word xeris comes from the Greek, and it means dry, so dry gardening, dry landscaping, and it's being able to plan and implement a garden or landscape that does not require a lot of water. Okay, so, and you and your team of master gardeners built a garden in Kittitas County, correct? Yes, yes. Um, So can you tell us a little bit more about that garden and and how it came about? Yes, our, we had a small garden at our, at the armory in Kittitas County where our master gardener office is, and it was in need of a makeover. It had a lot of plants that were too close to the building or too large for the spots they were in. And so we decided we needed to do an overhaul. But we had a nice pergola there, and we had some nice rose bushes there. So we chose to keep the pergola and the rose bushes in place, and we ripped out all the other plants that were there and repurposed them as best we could into other people's um, areas. And then we worked with our county conservation district, and they helped us plan and select the plants that we were going to use. Uh, to get this garden. And then we had another area that had been lawn before. So we brought in an excavator and removed all the sod from that area and went to work. And we started in May. And by October, we were finished. And um, that was with just a few volunteers working on it. So it isn't that hard and it didn't take that long. But we... um, reused what we could that we had that was existing and brought in gravel to make a, we brought in crushed rock for our pathway and we reused some wash rock that we have and brought in more washed rock. And um, then we, we chose selected plants that were all natives, all things that would be, could grow well in our area. And um, in the end, we were able to become a certified heritage garden by the County Conservation District here because of our choice of plants and our low water use. Okay, so that that low water use factor is kind of the key in, in this type of gardening, right? That's correct. Especially in the drier climate, I can see that the benefits. What are some other advantages of Xeriscape Gardens? Well, the, the advantages of Xeriscape, 
one of the main things is you can do it gradually. You don't have to go in and tear out your whole landscape and start from scratch. You can have your existing landscape with lawn or whatever you have, and then just start in one small place and put in a few plants and see what you like and what you don't like, and then just go from there. And it's way less maintenance than a conventional garden. And the ability to use native plants, no matter what part of the state you're in, the ability to use native plants of your area is a huge benefit because they will be adapted to your, uh, your rainfall or your water supply. And you also reduce runoff because you aren't using so much water that's going to run off and cause erosion or run into the storm water. And you can, again, you can use your existing plants and work with them and add to those with plants that have like watering needs. So you mentioned native plants being um, some of the best choices. What are some the resources you use the conservation, your local conservation district to help select plants? Is that right? We went to the conservation district, but there are uh, the Washington Native Plant Society has a great website and a lot of things listed there. And there are several uh, nurseries and seed companies in the state that offer native plant seeds for different areas of the state and different native plants that you can get. Great. So are there any disadvantages to Xeriscape Gardens? There are a few. Uh, for one, it takes a little getting used to the look for some people. They just aren't sure about the curb appeal of the the look of not a green lawn with shrubs and flowers up near your house. They just Some people just don't like that look. And it can be a little bit expensive. The outlay of, of expense at the start can be a little bit much. If you choose to use weed fabric or landscape fabric, that can be an expense. And then some of the rock can be expensive or stone, whatever you choose to use. But there are a lot of more inexpensive alternatives out there. There's like in in the choices of rock and stone, there's a lot of choices in uh, different types of stone and rock that you can get. So you don't have to have a huge outlay at one time. And if you start small, you can make it doable and just work into it gradually as you have the time and the money. So the stone that you used, was that as like a, a mulch or for paths or both? We did both. We have um, washed rock five feet out from the building all the way around our garden to demonstrate firewise. Because in our area, people are very interested in firewise landscaping. And we've been working with a lot of people in the community, they want to know about firewise, they want to know about waterwise. And so having this five feet of rock, we use large wash rock, about two inch wash rock, five feet out. And then we made a crushed rock pathway. And then where we have plants, we have uh, what's called maintenance sand, which is a real fine sandy gravel that's easy to work with and easy to plant in. And then that we have our plants in that and that is our top dressing over it, over that where, where we have plants. Well, that, that kind of covers my next question was about mulching and water conservation, which is um, you pretty much covered. So what are some of the common misconceptions about Xeriscape Gardens? Oh, there are many. <laughs> um, the main one that I... I think of is people think of Xeriscape and they think it's this barren, rocky, or just soil with a cactus or something in it. And that's what they think of as Xeriscape. And it it isn't that look at all. It doesn't have to be that look. That would be more of the Xeriscape, which is just your mulch, kind of a rock garden. But you can have different plants in a xeriscape garden that will bloom from early spring to fall by mixing your selection of plants up. You can have color early spring through fall. You can mix in cool season grasses and warm season grasses. So you have different size and different 
color and texture at different times of the year. And they can be really pretty gardens. They don't have to be sparse at all. As they tend to grow up and your plants get larger after a couple seasons, they can become very nice looking. Um, So what were some of your favorite plants that you put in that garden? My very favorite is it's called Desert Globe Mallow. And it's a really nice plant, a very low water use, and it is um, has beautiful orange little flowers on it that are pollinator attractors and other beneficial attractors. And it's just, it blooms and blooms and blooms. And then it will uh, self-seed a little. But I did harvest some of the seed this year, so hopefully we'll have some more of that next year. And then we also have a lot of different types of penstemon that we planted, and they bloom at different times of the year. They're different colors. Some of them are lower growing and some are larger. And so that's just a really nice mixture and some really nice grasses. Yeah, penstemon are nice because they've got the nice deep flowers that the hummingbirds like. Mm -hmm. And um, you can get lots of different colors and sizes. And that's one of my favorite flowers. We're taking a quick break to tell you all about the WSU Extension Master Gardener Program's Endowed Chair Campaign. WSU Extension Master Gardeners use knowledge to empower healthy and resilient communities. But what if we could do more? The WSU Extension Master Gardener Program is raising $1.5 million to hire a horticulture professor fully dedicated to the program and to the volunteers who give their time and talents. This professor, or endowed faculty chair, will teach new and existing WSU Extension Master Gardeners cutting-edge horticulture and environmental stewardship in perpetuity. They will create tools to support volunteer outreach, such as publications and fact sheets. They'll represent the program locally, statewide, nationally, and internationally, and partner and collaborate with like-minded organizations to leverage program strengths. And finally, they will conduct meaningful research and develop robust curricula that will build upon our program and find solutions to address difficult challenges like pollinator decline, increasing number of wildfires, food security, and climate change. Learn how your gift will support a greener, healthier Washington when you give to the WSU Extension Master Gardener Endowed Chair Fund at mastergardener.wsu.edu forward slash how to donate. That's how hyphen to hyphen donate. Links will be in the show notes for this episode. Um, Were there any other misconceptions that that you wanted to share? Well, I think people think it it can be kind of boring um, or that you can't have grass. And it you can still have a xeriscape garden and keep a patch of grass, like in a play area or an area where you might want to sit in your lawn or something. You can still have that and have maybe a, a lower water use grass planted or you could have your regular traditional lawn and then have xeriscaping with it. So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And then you just, again, in the choice of rock and different types of stone and different sizes of rock that you can use, um, it just, it's not dull and it's not boring. All right. So we talked a little bit about water conservation and um, how the xeriscaping can prevent runoff, but what about other environmental sustainability benefits to Xeriscape? If you use um, a sprinkler to water, the sprinkler is watering everything in its path. It'll water the sidewalk and the weeds and everything else. And it, But if you use drip irrigation, which would be highly recommended, you can adjust how much water you have to a certain area If you have plants that need higher water needs, you can group those together and then you can work your way out as far as how much water you need. But with drip irrigation, you can add more emitters, you can add drip line that has more holes per foot or that's larger in diameter so it'll give you more water and you can go then in an area where you don't need that you can do less water to plants that require less water. So you're not just watering everything the same. 
And that's a really big deal for those who are trying to conserve water. And it's it it also prevents your weeds from growing if you're watering only where you have plants. You can prevent yourself from watering the weeds, which is a nice thing. And it also for sustainability reduces maintenance um, for mowing a lawn and trimming, weeding, any chemical inputs a person might use. You can eliminate a lot of that by going to more water conserving plantings. So what is the weed pressure like in a Xeriscape Park garden? Is it lower than your typical ornamental bed? I think that's going to depend on where you've planted, because if you planted in an area that you really had weed pressure before, you're going to fight the weeds for a while. Eventually, whatever you've used for mulch is going to help you get rid of those weeds. Um, Some people use landscape fabric underneath whatever their mulch is, but a nice heavy coat of mulch will really help keep the weeds down. It will really help with, with that. And then by conserving water, you're not watering weeds, not encouraging them to grow. All right. So um, so what was the deciding factor to actually make a xeriscape garden as opposed to a typical ornamental garden? Well, because of learning about um, firewise and waterwise as a master gardener and having so many community members come in asking what is recommended to plant or how they could do that because people just aren't sure where to start with that. We decided that since our garden needed a makeover, it would be a good way to demonstrate to the community some of the principles of Xeriscape gardening and Firewise if we had a, a demo garden there to be able to showcase that for the public. All right. So can you explain a little bit, because you've mentioned Firewise a couple of times. I know you said you have a five foot ring of rock around the, the bed. Can you explain the what FireWise is and how that fits into that? Yes. FireWise is keeping plantings away from a building or having things that are trimmed up so they aren't shrubby right at a building. Um, it's recommended to be five feet away from any building with and having no plants in that space. Or if you have plants in that space, something that's not woody, maybe daylilies or some kind of succulents, if you had something in that area, or containers that could be moved away. But the the recommended distance from a building to have any uh, tree or shrub would be at least five feet. And so we just used a different type of rock to make that five foot line so it was easy to see how far out five feet is from the building and that it doesn't look like half your area is bare. Okay. And so the the purpose of that is if there is a wildfire, then it's less likely to come right up to the building. Is that correct? That's correct. And then it wouldn't climb any uh, any tree or shrub that's planted there. The fire wouldn't climb that and head toward the building. Is there anything else that you would like to add about the garden, your the garden you built in particular, or xeriscaping in general? I just think that people um, should have a look if they if they don't think they like the look or they aren't sure what the look is. Get a look at some because and they aren't just in central and eastern Washington. There there's resources on the west side too where there are some real nice gardens that are put together. But these gardens, the first couple of years, they do require a little bit more water. But then after that, they don't require much more water than what Mother Nature provides in a year's time these plants should be adapted to that. But these gardens can just be really pretty and really a nice attraction to a business or a a home. And they are pollinator attractors and they attract a lot of beneficials as well. Okay. Do you know of uh, any other Xeriscape gardens in particular that we could um, share? 
on the on this side in central Washington, Benton Franklin Master Gardeners have a nice one down in Benton Franklin County, and then um, in Wenatchee, Chelan Douglas Master Gardeners have a very nice xeriscape garden. I think there's a couple of them actually up there. Well, we'll try to include links or photos to those in the show notes, um, and I'll do some research and find some on the west side. I'm sure there's multiples that are in. Um, on the west side here. There is at the Arboretum in, I believe, King County Arboretum, but I'm not positive on, on which Arboretum. Any last thoughts that you'd like to add? No, I don't think so, other than give it a try, and it's a good choice for all areas. And you can start small, but give it a try. All right. Well, thanks for so much for being here today and talking to us about Xeriscape and a little bit about Firewise, too. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Evergreen Thumb, brought to you by the WSU Extension Master Gardener Program volunteers and sponsored by the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. We hope that today's discussion has inspired and equipped you with valuable insights to nurture your garden. The Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State is a nonprofit organization whose primary purpose is to provide unifying support and advocacy for WSU Extension Master Gardener programs throughout Washington State. To support the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State, visit www.mastergardenerfoundation.org forward slash donate. Whether you're an experienced Master Gardener or just starting out, the WSU Extension Master Gardener program is here to support you every step of the way. WSU Extension Master Gardeners empower and sustain diverse communities with relevant, unbiased, research-based horticulture education. Reach out to your local WSU Extension office to connect with Master Gardeners and tap into a wealth of resources that can help you achieve gardening success. To learn more about the program or how to become a Master Gardener, visit mastergardener.wsu.edu forward slash get hyphen involved. If you enjoyed today's episode and want to stay connected with us, be sure to subscribe to future episodes filled with expert tips, fascinating stories, and practical advice. Don't forget to leave a review and share it with fellow gardeners to spread the joy of gardening. Questions or comments to be addressed in future episodes can be sent to hello at theevergreenthumb.org. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed by guests of this podcast are their own and do not imply endorsement by Washington State University or the Master Gardener Foundation of Washington State. Mm-hmm.